praise the Lord. Uh, we're happy to be in God's house one more time. Uh, we thank God for uh, another day's journey. We thank Him for His goodness and His grace. Uh, we thank Him for another opportunity to minister His Word here. Uh, we're just thankful for each and every one of you. We thank God for protection uh, during this time of uh, pandemic and what seems to be a growing epidemic. But uh, we are safe in the arms of the Lord today. We thank God for all he has done. And, and as we approach uh, what would be Easter, it is going to be a different sort of Easter for us this year. Uh, most of us won't be gathering in churches uh, together as a congregation, but yet the significance is still there. Uh, we just thank the Lord for his word today. We thank him for his Holy Spirit, and we thank him for all his many spiritual blessings that he has given us. Amen. We give honor to our pastor, uh, Bishop Renzi Abram, and all those faithful at Berea Church. Amen. Uh, we just give God all the glory today. Uh, without further ado, we will go right into the text this morning. And I ask if you're at home, would you pray for me as I just minister for a few minutes about the death of Jesus as we approach Easter. And Easter is such a big part of our faith. Uh, we like to take some time to consider the death of Jesus, the death of Jesus and its significance, what, what it symbolizes for us, what, what it afforded us as believers. Um, and and it, it's important to take a little time to consider uh, before the resurrection, uh, the death that preceded uh, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. If you have your Bibles or your devices, if you would go to the 23rd chapter of Luke today, the 23rd chapter of Luke, and I'm going to read Luke 23, 33 through 47. I'm going to read from the King James Version. Sometimes I read from different versions, but uh, the King James Version appears to work well today. Amen. And it reads, When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was written a notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and save us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly for what we are getting, what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Verse 44 reads, it was now about noon. And darkness came over the whole land until three weeks in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last breath. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Let's bow our head in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your son Jesus. We thank you for his life and his death and his resurrection. Today, as we focus on his death, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you give us the help 
to make the scripture plain, that someone's heart may be blessed, their understanding might be full. We can't do it without your help, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Send your Holy Spirit. We need your help, Lord. We are incapable of doing anything without you, and we surely cannot get a right understanding of your word without your help. So help us to understand, hallelujah, the principle and the importance of the death of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, well, it seems like that may have been the NIV version there, but nevertheless, I think it's a good, a good version. Uh, when they came to a place, I believe the King James Version says Calvary. When they came to a place called Calvary. And I would like to minister just for a few minutes uh, under the thought at the cross. At the cross. Um, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and, and his resurrection are the two most important events, in, in, not just in Christianity, but, but in human history. Why is this so? Because of Jesus' death, because of his death, the human race has an opportunity for eternal salvation. Because of his death, we have an opportunity for eternal salvation. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, the Lamb of God. And when we look back into the Old Testament, we see a Lamb that was slain in Egypt uh, to deliver God's people from physical slavery in Egypt. But that Lamb was to point forward to the great Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world. You say, why do we need a payment for sin? Well, Romans 3 and 23 says that the wages of sin is death. Uh, that sin uh, has a cost. Uh, as the person who wonders how God is going to sort out all the problems of life, uh, understand that there is a wage to be paid. There is a penalty for sin. And Romans 23, 3 and 23 points that out. It says that the wages and the penalty for sin is death. But it goes on to tell us that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When we look into the text, we find Jesus had endured a long night in the Garden of Gethsemane. Doing the will of God requires much prayer. He had been taken to a place called Gabbatha, or the pavement in English, where he was tied and beaten and scorched, uh, a horrible death. What we like to know as the crucifixion. The Roman antiquity crucifixion was considered one of the most brutal and shameful modes of death. Uh, probably originating from the Assyrians and Babylonians, it was used systematically by the Persians in the 6th century B.C. under Alexander the Great, and from there it was brought uh, to Rome by the Phoenicians. But the Romans, as they did with many art forms, they perfected the crucifixion uh, for 500 years until it became so, uh, so horrible that Constantine uh, abolished the act in the 4th century A.D., Crucifixion in Rome, Roman times was applied mostly to slaves, to disgraced soldiers, Christians, and foreigners, uh, very rarely to Roman citizens. And it would seem that Roman citizens didn't want anything to do with the cross. Uh, the crucifixion always ended in death, usually after six hours. Uh, sometimes it took several days for the person to die. Uh, they died a multifactorial uh, ways, pathology, the after effects of compulsory scourging, maiming, and hemorrhage were the cause of death ultimately. Hydration caused by hypovolemic shock and pain. But the most important factor was a progressive asphyxia caused by the impairment of the respiratory movement. Uh, death was probably commonly precipitated by cardiac arrest, 
suffocation, severe, severe blows, body blows, and the breaking of large bones. The attending Roman guards could only leave the site after the victim had died and were known to precipitate death by means of deliberate, deliberately fracturing the tibia and or the fibula. Spear stab wounds into the heart, sharp blows to the front of the chest, and sometimes the Romans would build a smoking fire at the foot of the cross to suffocate the victim. So cruel and inhumane was the process that, that the word crucifixion was not even allowed in most Roman homes. The crucifixion of Jesus was arguably the most well-known and controversial execution in history. The Romans crucified some 30,000 people during their heyday. Not one single name comes forward except that of Jesus Christ. During scourging, a person was stripped naked, tied to a pulse, and, and then flogged across the back. Flesh ripped from his back and his buttocks and his legs by the Roman soldiers. This excessive whipping would weaken the victim, causing deep wounding, severe pain and bleeding. Frequently the victim fainted during the procedure and sudden death was not uncommon. Uh, the authors wrote the victim was then usually taunted with the pain and suffering going on, they were taunted and forced to carry the patibulum or the crossbar uh, that we remember Simeon carrying for Christ. It was tied across their shoulders to carry to their own death in place of execution. The cruelty didn't stop there. Sometimes the Roman soldiers would hurt the victim further, cutting off body parts like their tongue or or blinding him, gouging out their eyes. In other heinous terms, Josephus reported how soldiers under Antioch IV would have the victim's strangled child hung around his neck as he himself hung on the cross. And as a sign to all those who might oppose Roman government, these the sick and deranged means of death would be inflicted upon someone who, who endured crucifixion. Uh, the next step varied with location. In Jerusalem, women would offer condemned and pain-relieving drink to those who hung on the cross, usually wine or myrrh or incense. Then the victim would be tied or nailed to the crossbar, the patibulum. And after that, the cross would be lifted and affixed to an upright post of the cross to form a T. The victim's feet would be tied or nailed through the wood. While the victim awaited death, soldiers would commonly divide up his clothes and among themselves. Uh, but for many victims, death did not always come quickly. It took many hours and sometimes days for a victim to expire. And during that time, experiencing the uttermost pain. When the person died, family members would collect and bury their body. And once they received permission from the Roman judge, otherwise the corpse would be left on the cross if he didn't have a family. Predatory animals and birds would come and devour and eat at the person. Uh, to investigate crucifixion without actually killing anybody, German researchers tied volunteers uh, by their wrists to a cross and then they monitored their respiratory and cardiovascular activity in the 1960s. <laughs> Within six minutes, the volunteers had trouble breathing. Their pulse rates had doubled and their blood pressure had plummeted. According to the 1963 study in the journal Berlin Medicine, the experiment had to be stopped after about 30 minutes because of wrist pain. Uh, that 
That said, victims could have died from various causes, including multiple organ failure, respiratory failure. Given the pain and suffering that was entailed, it's no wonder that the crucifixion spawned the English word excruciating, which means out of the cross. Why do we preach the cross, Calvary? Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 4 that we should always carry around in our bodies the death of Jesus so that his life may be revealed in ours. For we who are alive are always being given over to his de death for his sake so that his life may be revealed in ours. So that when death was at work in him, life was at work in us. Hallelujah. So that our blatant disobedience and our poor service might be met with the great sacrifice and suffering of the one who never knew any sin. It is at the cross where we find the punishment, the due punishment for our sin laid upon Jesus. It is at the cross all our sins were laid upon Christ and divine judgment fell upon him. The Apostle John tells us that propitiation was made. Uh, that word means atonement, uh, solely Godward. It was a question of meeting the claims of God's holiness, his goodness, and his righteousness. It was a matter of satisfying the demands of justice for sin. Not only was Christ's blood shed for us, but it was shed for God himself. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 2 that he gave himself up a, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God at the cross. Thus it was foreshadowed the memorial night at the Passover in Egypt and the Lamb's blood must be where God's eye could see it. Uh, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. The death of Christ on the cross was the death of curse. Galatians 3 and 13 says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Christ suffered for our sins, the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God. Being put to death in the body, the Bible said he lives on in the spirit. Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities that the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed at the cross. All we, we like sheep have gone astray and we have turned everyone his own way and God has laid on him the iniquity of us all at the cross. The songwriter wrote, was it for crimes that I had done that he hung upon the tree? Amazing pity and grace unknown. It was love beyond degree at the cross. Somebody said he was hung up for my hang-ups at the cross. Spurgeon said that strange it is that where misery was concentrated, mercy reigned. And where sorrow reached her climax, weary souls find rest. At the cross, we find redemption. At the cross, we find peace. At the cross, we find identity as sinners and an eternity and a future with Christ through his suffering and through his pain. In conclusion, I just want to say that the Bible says that he died for all so that we who live should no longer live for themselves but unto him that died for them and rose again. Jesus said in Luke 9 and 23, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, follow me. I thank the Lord today for the death of Jesus, and I thank him for the cross. And as we look forward to the Resurrection Sunday and the wonderful time that we spend thinking about the resurrection, and it's a glorious time, Next week is Passover week, and it, it delineates the entire process of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem.
and to his death and ultimately to his resurrection. But, but this morning, I want you to consider just for a little while at the cross. The suffering that Christ endured was real. It was a time in history that changed faith as we know it. Uh, that all the Old Testament saints came alive in faith through the cross. That we were all dead through the law under the just punishment and righteousness of God. But Jesus in his stead went in our place. Much as Barabbas was released uh, in place of Jesus, we also have become, a, he's become our substitute. So we thank him this morning. We thank the Lord for his death. We thank him for his suffering. And today as we deal with the coronavirus, it's important to understand that we are covered by the blood of Jesus. And that doesn't mean we are going to never get sick or never have to suffer. But we are covered by his blood and by his stripes we are healed today. And I encourage you to say those words uh, occasionally throughout the day and throughout the week that, that I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. That his suffering was real and, and, and we have been afforded healing and protection through the Son of God. We thank the Lord for all that he has done. We thank him for his life. We thank him for his death. We thank him for his resurrection. We thank him for the power of the Holy Spirit that he's given us to overcome. We thank him for heavenly places that we have to look forward to in Christ. Uh, we know that this world is not our home. And one day we are going to get up out of here and all those who have their hope in Christ. The Bible said the dead in, in Christ shall rise first and those who remain shall be caught up in heaven to meet him. What a wonderful truth to know. That one day because of Jesus, because of his death, because of his life, that he has paid the ultimate price for our salvation. That's why we serve him, that's why we praise him, and that's why we give our lives to him. We thank you, Lord, for your son, and we thank you for his death. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the free pardon of sin that we have through the sacrificial lamb. Lord, as we look forward to Easter, we ask that we don't look past the suffering that Christ endured. Isaiah lets us know that he was marred more than any man. No one in history suffered like Christ suffered. Hallelujah. Help us as believers always carry about his death in our bodies so that our lives might be changed and we might manifest God's life through his death. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. We thank you for the cross of shame for today. That cross is glorious. We thank you for the church and we thank you. For your son and Jesus Christ, who is the chief cornerstone of the church. Lift our faith today. Guide us through what we go through today. Keep the family of faith, hallelujah, today. We know that you are able and you have promised, hallelujah, a mighty harvest to those who labor. Encourage us today to not be weary in well-doing, knowing that in due time we shall reap if we faint not. Father God, we thank you once again. We give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. May the Lord bless you real good.